time had gone soft at the crossroads. And let me tell you how. sunshine, a ruddy autumnal smell of bonfires and whiskey rose from the earth. The land was bathed in monochrome. A nearby cluster of barrows glowed with psychedelic sepia tones. This landscape remembers. It remembers every footfall and wheel roll and bears each of these as lines on its face. It was the first of May, and I was up long before the day. A half-inch layer of mist covered everything. The spider's webs, the dropped Stella empties, my breath. Each was coated with a milky film and a floral taste, like fresh-cut herbs. Down a Twitter, I came to a park. We'd picnicked there the day after my grandmother's funeral, the last time my family would all gather in Stenning. Stenning, that strange town, so full of spirits, one can hardly move. Even in these tightening lanes, the seasons cycle around. Just outside the town, at the round hill, I watched dawn choristers flock up the downs into a dull glow of rising sun. The sky, a turn of wash. I followed, and could soon see in the distance the ring, Shanktonbury ring. It seemed to levitate between earth and sky, a holy persecution, battered and broken, its spine snapped. Since the storm, I have to work to see Shanktonbury the way it once was, augmented with childhood memories. Fleshed out with scores of beaches in its tight circle, a flourishing island atop the stark oceanic downs, it is shattered now. But if I squint, I can still see them, the ghost trees. sheep clustered within, they corralled their lambs among the trees. The mist hugged and highlighted the outlines of an ancient hill fort, and wisps of fairy-like wool snagged on the bare spring branches, dressing the trees like dream catchers, each one a memory. And I 
thought of Belloc as he, too, walked this place. The moon stood over Shanktonbury, so removed and cold in her silver that you might almost have thought her careless of the follies of men. Sleep came at last to me also, but that night, dead friends visited me in dreams. Shanktonbury Ring is the thin place on my map, that place where another world peeks through. It's where I go to believe, to remember that I can believe. It's there that dead friends visit and dead voices gather. Memories linger and haunt like snagged wool. Many have felt this way, and for thousands of years, yet we each hold the experience as ours alone. Just as the ghost trees appear, so too Winnie, my grandmother. I see her there, not just living, but alive. Like many have done at Shanktonbury, she levitates, just barely, above a felled trunk or protruding chalk head. On the first of May, I found her there, and I fell into a haze, a warm opioid befuddlement. It's a feeling that I think might be called religious. I wasn't raised to recognize such things, but it sure felt like it. Mystics dreamt of being swallowed by an oceanic landscape, and that makes sense on Shankenberg, breathing in miles of land and air, divided only by the thin white line of the old chalk road. People see things on that hillside. They hear things. They are, indeed, levitated. I may not know what it means to believe in something, but it must be a bit like this. Buzzed with a warm confusion, I saw my dead grandmother hover a half inch above a fallen tree's trunk, just for an instant, and then gone. And there, Top Shanktonbury, on the first day of May, I heard bells ring in the swaddling mist. Shanktonbury. 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 Once, the trees were thick enough to harbor darkness at midday. But the trees were latecomers, mere centuries ago. The hill's name, whatever strange sound that was, rang out like a bell in the mist for thousands of years before they grew. Long before anything like English was spoken there. the ring, the trees a teenage boy planted in the 18th century, now thinned by the great storm. I had come to scour for a fallen tree trunk, a place I had sat alone as a child on my first visit to Shankton. The 
this time, I was not alone. Something was watching me from the old road that crosses the downs. I couldn't see, but I could hear those bells. Bells like an entity passing by. Up on the down, the red-eyed kestrels hover, eyeing the grass. The field mouse flits like a shadow into cover as their shadows pass. Men are burning the gorse on the down's shoulder. A drift of smoke glitters with fire and hangs, and the skies smolder and the lungs choke. Once the tribe did thus on the downs, on these downs, burning men in the frame, crying to the gods of the downs till their brains were turning, and the gods came, and today on the downs, in the wind, the hawks, the grasses, in blood and air, something passes me and cries as it passes on the chalk down and bare. The bells grew louder, voices too. I circled back to the other side of the ring and saw straw hats strewn with flowers emerge from the hillocks. I hid, biding my time, as I watched the Morris men gather at the ring's eastern edge. All white with bright red sashes, bells sewn into their boots and trousers, hats and vests studded with buttons, and spiked with feathers. They were at the ring to dance in the May, to welcome the summer atop the downs, where it might first arrive, as if sprinkled from above. There were so many of them, and so few of us, civilians, I mean, audience. It was mist raining and chilly. It was very early in the morning. Almost no one was watching. By earthly standards, not a great gig. But they began to dance, and I knew this had nothing to do with us. They stepped in the same patterns in which bearded men had stepped a century before them, maybe in the same place. Morris won't make the rains or the harvest come. No child will flourish because of this dance. God knows no fertility will be enhanced. It is a checkpoint. A diary entry written onto the earth at Shanktonbury with footsteps, like lines accrued on a face. That, that is tradition. That is its sole purpose, to be enacted, and ever so. The place could not be thinner for such an undertaking. At Shanktonbury, each subsequent invader of the Downs had discovered new unknowns. Two thousand years ago, the Druids found barrows already older than memory and invented stories to explain them. Now we do the same. The Romans built temples there, at least two in their time, and worshipped pagan gods 
while fearing the ones that lingered in the old fortress visible in the ground. The Saxons found the ruined temples, practiced their own religion. When Christ came, his house was built at the foot of the downs, but above it, on Shanktonbury, that was for Woden. 800 years ago, an incident. A monk killed mysteriously at Shanktonbury on the eve of the nativity of St. John the Baptist, a night marked by bonfire and drunkenness, the summer solstice. The traditional meeting place of Sussex witches is Shanktonbury Ring, wrote Dorian Valiente, a coven, an unbroken line of the old religion at Shankton. Figment of Valiente's imagination? Perhaps. But in the 20th century, a London businessman found in the center of the ring, gun by his side, bullet through his heart. Two girls from Worthing plot their own deaths by poison on a carriage journey over the down. The sentiment, a place of ritual, a place of life and death, was there. The Morris men danced on forever. Their clashing sticks and jingling bells receded into the mist as I circled the trees until I found something familiar. There, among snagged wool and snagged mist, I put my hand on a young tree to spin myself around and stopped with a sharp breath. There she was, Winnie. see the dead. Certainly no more than anyone else, because we all see the dead sometimes, don't we? Waiting on a cloud-darkened bench, or passing by us on a side street, or fumbling for their keys in the hallway. But there she was, hovering above a log, in a skirt made for walking, and the thin beige windbreaker ubiquitous to 80s England. Her hair showed the first flashes of its graying corona. Her elbows were pinned in impatience as though holding a saucer and teacup. She didn't move or acknowledge me. I never saw her face. And then she was gone. I can't convince you it happened. I couldn't draw a diagram or map the winds on that particular day, that particular moment. But it did happen. 